Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Trans Stupid, where I take a look at the wonderful world of LGBTQIA++ news, because stupidity is intersectional. So, the first story that I want to touch on this week involves one of Trans Stupid's biggest characters, probably even bigger than Jess Bradley. What is it with Jess's? Jessica Yaniv, the tampon-loving troon from Canada who's currently taking a number of beauticians to court for refusing to wax their feminine genitals. Now, Yaniv is clearly the most controversial trans person to come out in a very, very long time. There's a lot of focus on this individual who, and I do think that they're quite enjoying it. However, as long as this person still kind of poses a threat to people, I think it's important to cover what they're up to. And this week, things got interesting for Yaniv when they came across an actual LGBT activist from Trinidad and Tobago. So a lot of you probably haven't heard of Jason Jones, and for good reason, being from Trinidad and Tobago, but he's quite an accomplished activist who successfully challenged the constitutionality of sections 13 and 16 of the Sexual Offences Act in Trinidad and Tobago, which prohibited consensual adult intercourse. And as a result, this is a big move towards LGBT acceptance in an area where being gay could really realistically lead to you being killed. So this is a man who really has been persecuted by the system and, yeah, faces oppression from his own people for who he is. But at a human rights event in Canada, everyone's favourite Yanivi individual managed to meet up with him. In a Facebook post on August the 1st, Yaniv says, I can't believe the award-winning global human rights defender Jason Jones from Trinidad knew who I was. 2012 was all about the cake. That's in reference to the bake the cake bigot meme. And now 2019 is about myself, Jessica Yaniv, fighting on my own to prevent discrimination on the refusal of services to those in protected groups because they are in those protected groups. In this case, the refusal of gender affirming care services on my bowels. My fight is far from over, and as Jason has said, keep fighting, and thanks for all you're doing. And there's a brilliant picture where Yaniv actually got off their mobility scooter to stand next to somebody who is in a wheelchair, kind of showing they don't really need their mobility scooter after all, but as I think I've previously mentioned, I do believe the mobility scooter is there just to give Yaniv some more oppression points. Now, as one might expect, with Yaniv being such a big name and controversial person, this story did manage to get out, and Jones was actually called to task for saying that Yaniv was doing good work. There was quite a number of different posts on Twitter calling this out, saying to actually do research into Jessica Yaniv before congratulating her. After reading some of the responses, Jones went on to say that he didn't actually know who Jessica Yaniv is, saying, As you can imagine, in my travels, I meet many people, so a generic, keep up the good work, is to encourage. But if that is being used to endorse harm, I certainly will not tolerate that. I shall look into this. Thank you for flagging it. So, Jones did his research, and he then posted up another status saying, Wow. WTAF, I seem to have inadvertently really put my foot in it, unfortunately. If I had any clue who this individual was and their quite shocking history, I would have asked them to leave the event, let alone take a picture with me. I am livid about this. She is quite obviously been completely duplicitous in her very brief engagement with me at this event, and she manipulated me into a position that she could use me and my reputation as endorsing of her BS agendas. I will begin formulating a public response to this vileness. Yaniv's racist comments were also flagged up to Jones, saying in response to being told about this, as a person of colour myself, I'm deeply upset to hear. It does seem uh, like this kind of person is attempting to co-opt my reputation and use my kindness to validate her own brand and agendas. 
So not going to happen. Eventually, Jones put up a pinned tweet explaining his position, saying a trans woman, in commas, of quite dubious reputation attended the event Thursday and with quite obvious intent of co-opting my name and reputation to endorse her very questionable trans activism. I disavow any support for them and my more formal statements after formal investigation. Now, Yaniv didn't take these responses well, as one would expect. Even Mama Yaniv stepped into the ring to criticise Jones. And from some of the work that Kiwi Farms has done, it appears that somebody in the Vancouver area actually went and edited Jones's Wikipedia page to say that he is a fake gay activist. Hmm, I, I wonder who I wonder who that was. G G I, mm, I I don't I don't think we'll ever figure that one out. But why am I covering this? I mean, this just seems like a little spat between well, an activist who has done a lot of work for LGBT people and a opportunist who is obsessed with attention. Well, I think this is important because, as I've mentioned in a previous video, there are not many high-profile act LGBT activists calling out Yaniv when a lot of them really should be doing this. In fact, some of them seem to be outright praising Yaniv. There was a white knight who jumped into the fray after Jones started condemning Yaniv's actions, saying that Jones was being out of order. And I also have to bring up a recent story from Pink News, which covered Yaniv in a very sensitive light. And even when Yaniv's antics were brought to light with them, they only responded to the racism allegations. In an update on the article, Pink News said that they put these claims to Yaniv and asked her for a response. In her response, she admitted to making racist remarks, saying, yes, I did publish racist remarks, in commas, because being denied services daily from the East Indian community at any business sucks. She went on to claim that trans people are victims, but that immigrants are not, saying the immigrants are targeting trans people. We are the victims, not them. Well, as I'm sure a lot of you already know, Yaniv's claim that, well, they were only being racist because they were denied service falls flat when you look at their history of racial abuse towards ethnic minorities in Canada. And there's quite a few things on record, including some video footage. We're just not getting any kind of condemnation, though, from activists. And it seems to be only when people are being really called to account on this that they take almost a half assed approach. Could you imagine Pink News being so placid about, did you say something racist? If it was someone like, say, Milo Yiannopoulos, Blair White, someone who might be a bit more obviously not riding the whole identity politics agenda that Yaniv clearly is. And before I end this segment on Yaniv, I do want to address a bit of criticism that I've seen, not aimed at me, but coming from people such as Cat Black, where they say that the trans community should not be condemning Yaniv. It's not their responsibility. Yaniv is an individual in the same way that, say, if a white person did something, you wouldn't expect all white people to condemn. But I just kind of want to clarify what my position on this is so there's no misgivings. I do not believe that every single trans person has to condemn Yaniv. If you are a trans man or a trans woman who goes about your daily business and doesn't really comment on any of the identity politics that goes on, you have absolutely no skin in this game. There's no point in getting involved. You don't have to condemn Yaniv. However, if your whole life is about being an activist, if you are someone who pushes self-ID, if you're one of the kind of people who says that nothing involving self-ID or trans people, there's never any kind of problems, when a problem actually does turn up, you do need to acknowledge it. You can't just claim that everything is perfect and then ignore the examples that go against your own narrative. In fact, I find the whole narrative of trans people will never cause any harm quite bizarre because of course there's always going to be outliers in everything and you need is that outlier. But if your arguments are always that ev there's never going to be anyone taking advantage of self-ID, that there is never going to be instances where trans people will use their position to abuse others, if that is your line, 
then yes, I think you should be condemning Yaniv. And if you don't, that says that you care much more about your politics than the actual harm this individual is doing to real people of all different ages. And hell, if you want to play the identity politics pyramid, look at the people that Yaniv is taking to court. They're almost all immigrants. Seriously. But you've got to really acknowledge the problem here. I, if your skin and if your entire brand, if you constantly comment on trans stuff in a way that I do, then yes, you should be speaking about Yaniv. If you are a trans celebrity that is famous because you are trans and for no other reason, then maybe you should be condemning Yaniv as well. And your silence is being acknowledged by a lot of people. When a white person might shoot somewhere up, you don't write people's jobs as generally not being a white person, but for a lot of trans people, their job is generally being a trans person. So there's a big difference there. But moving away from Yaniv, the next subject which I want to touch on is kind of a bit strange, but it brings up quite an interesting way in which the whole identity politics arguments go. Model lies about being transgender after receiving backlash for anti-trans comments. A fashion model who recently admitted to lying about being transgender after making anti-trans comments online says she's now taking full responsibility for her actions. Carissa Pinkston came out last week as transgender after she caused controversy over statements she shared on Facebook suggesting transgender women were not women. She said, being transgender does not make you a woman, it simply makes you transgender. This is how they want to be perceived. In a biological context, there are females and males. This is the world in 2019. After she was ridiculed and subsequently fired from her agency, Pinkston took to social media again to explain that her comments stemmed from her own inner insecurities as a transgender. I really, really hate that term. I wasn't ready to come out about it yet, but today I got fired and I've been receiving hate mail and death threats ever since, so I'm being forced to tell the truth. I'm transgender. I transitioned at a very young age and I've lived my life as a female ever since. It's been very hard to keep this secret, but what I said about trans women is a direct reflection of my inner insecurities and I have since come to realise that I am a woman. We all are. But Aaron Phillips, a transgender model who knows Pinkston, later took to Twitter to accuse her of lying about her gender identity. And days later, Pinkston issued another statement confessing that it was indeed a lie. I apologise for any transphobic remark I've ever made towards the trans community. I panicked and thought if I came out as trans that I could somehow make things better for myself, but it appears I've only made things worse. I'm truly sorry. I'm only 20 and I'm human. I make mistakes, but I refuse to let them define me. I hope you all can forgive me and move on from this because I'm so much more than this incident and I'm not a coward. I find this story absolutely fascinating for a wide number of reasons. First of all, the fact that she felt the need to come out as trans, even though she wasn't, in order to act as a shield because of the statements that she had made. And one of the things which I always bring up is the fact that in this wonderful world of identity politics and intersectionality, these identities that you have, anything which you can claim that you are, acts as a protective shield when you criticize it. For example, I would not be able to run a lot of these videos were I not a transsexual myself, because if you had a cis person doing this, they would get bombarded with I, I, accusations of trans misogyny, transphobia, cis sexism, blah, 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 blah. Which, by the way, I do get, like, as in I actually have been accused of being cis myself. I know how, how awful that a trans person is accused of being cis. Like, heartbreaking. But it is true in that these identities do give you a bit of shield about what you can and can't talk about. And so it's not surprising that people claim that they are trans when they are not because their actions get them called out by the community when really it shouldn't. Statements saying that there's only females and males or even saying trans women or women, what happens just disagreeing? Like saying trans women or women or trans women or men or whatever, these should not be illegal statements to make. These should not be statements that make people lose their jobs, one side or the other. And so 
the fact that she lost her job because she ultimately just had an opinion, I, I think is disgraceful. And it doesn't surprise me in this day and age because the mob will come after you. And as she said, she ended up, well, she says that she got some death threats. Now, is there any evidence of this? No. But does would it surprise me if this was true? Well, no, because we've all been on Twitter. We've all been on Tumblr. We see how these people act, especially when there's a layer of anonymity behind them. They become real keyboard warriors and they will indeed send things like threats of violence, threats of death. It, that in itself should not surprise anyone at all. So the last story that I want to touch on today is one that's probably been covered in a lot of different places, but it's still one I wanted to look at myself because again, this building on what has to be a big video now on transitioning children. And in fact, this isn't even the first time a story like this has come out this year or has even been covered by me. They're happier than ever. Parents reveal both of their children are transgender and decided to transition aged just five and eight. Parents of two transgender children who were aged five and eight when they transitioned insist their kids are happier than ever. James, 11, and his little sister, Olivia, 7, live with their supportive parents, Ben and Sarah Kaplan, in Berkeley, California. The family say they are sharing their story with the hope of normalising the narrative surrounding trans children, in a country where only 0.3% of adults are transgender, according to a 2011 study. Sarah said, The reaction when people hear that we have two trans kids is shock and awe. A lot of people think it must be a copycat situation where the younger one is just mimicking the older one. James was eight years old when he told his parents he wanted to transition from female to male. He was in second grade. Olivia was four when she said she was transgender but didn't begin socially transitioning and using female pronouns until she was five and entering kindergarten. In reference to Olivia's transition, Sarah said it was less shocking because we had just had a tra child transition. We had educated ourselves about gender. The idea that you could have a family where it turned out two of the children, both the brother and the sister or whatever, were both trans, I think is statistically possible. And let's say that both of these children were young adults when they came out, there would probably be a bit more of a that's quite interesting that maybe there is something biologi biological that's going on that is causing this that there is some sort of trait that's being passed down that means that this family is just generating tranners but the young ages definitely do concern me and in particular when you look at the way that the kids talk in comments in the sun james said i have always been a boy before I transitioned, I had a piece missing and it didn't feel right. I was nervous to tell my parents, but when I did, they said they accepted me. I was happy because I know a lot of trans kids don't have that. And that's sad. So how did he know what the acceptance rate for trans kids would be when he is eight years old? How? Bear in mind when I was eight, the only kinds of people I'd ever seen that were labelled as trans were big beer gut truckers. So how is an eight-year-old get an understanding of whether young people are being accepted by their parents or not? Where did that information come from? Because that I don't even think that would be taught in schools. And bear in mind the kind of things that are being taught nowadays. I can't see these kinds of statistics being there. So how? That that need that question needs to be asked. Because if you want to be thinking that this is being passed down or being pushed on these kids by the parents, they how did they get this information? How were they able to really at that especially at such a young age, really put forward whether they are trans or not? How did they do it? And where did that information come from? And you can see this even more when you look at the um, look at the daughter's comments. Um, Olivia added, "Being trans means you were born in a gender that you don't feel in your heart. Anyone can be whoever they want to be, and it doesn't matter what your opinion is." Again, how many kids do you know that say it doesn't matter what your opinion is? Like they, that's not the way a child talks. That looks as though it was words put into their mouth by an adult. And this is a lot of one of my big concerns about transitioning kids at such young ages is I completely understand that 
a child can deal with gender dysphoria. I did. And so I don't want anyone who is thinking that I'm being heartless to kids with gender dysphoria, thinking that I'm completely against them having any kind of treatment. The problem that I have is that recently this seems to be more and more pushed from people with an agenda. And when you see people talking in ways that aren't realistic, and again, whenever you get these kids, whether it's gay kids or drag queen kids or trans kids, they always talk like activists. They always seem to be like the fed lines. They don't talk like a child at all. And I think that's really important to acknowledge when you ha- or when we're expected to believe that all of this is perfectly fine and that there is nothing untoward happening here. My general point on all of this would be that if there is someone, a real medical professional who is constantly keeping tabs and there is a lot of support and planning in place, then maybe transitioning isn't a bad thing for someone who is young, but I'm not convinced that that's ever the case. I mean, the comments in the in the article even go on to say that the the older one is already on hormone blockers, and I I, I find that quite strange at, at a young age. Again, like, why is all of this being pushed? Um, I one of my big concerns with these kinds of moves is that one day there's going to be quite a big scandal and there will be a lot of kids who have been told by adults that they are trans when they are not and they will mature into teenagers and their bodies will be messed up and they will then you know have to live with that for the rest of their lives and people will then be thinking well a lot of this trans stuff is absolute nonsense and then you will have the people who are generally anti-trans people saying look let's see this is what we've been saying all along and people think in collectivist ways and when you start saying well some of these things are absolute bs then it's gonna fall onto people like myself that will be blamed and i think that a lot more trans people really need to be thinking that Yes, we need to make trans healthcare does need to get better. The, some of the waiting lists in the UK in particular are insane, but we at the same time we need to make sure that the people who are getting the care definitely need it. And a lot of these kids, I'm not convinced that they are. They look like they're being fed lines from people, and I'm not very comfortable with it. But what are your thoughts on the stories I've covered this week? Is there anything in particular I've missed out? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, just to let you know, the live stream I'm going to be doing with Blair White and Marsboro will, should be on Wednesday. Um, it was originally scheduled to be Monday evening, but Yaniv wanted to debate Blair. This is filmed before that debate. But I've got a feeling that it might have looked a little bit like this. But thank you all again for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. You can also support me on Patreon and subscribe star if you like what I'm doing. And I'll see you all next time. And a special thank you to James, Sarah, The Poor of Rizzo, Prue, and the rest of my supporters on Patreon and Subscribestar. star.